because both corporate sponsored political parties have delivered crisis after crisis. And while there are differences around the margins, their core policies are fundamentally the same. What's really different is the narrative. The Democrats have a kind of warm and fuzzy, kinder, gentler narrative. But if you actually look at the record, it's clear that Obama has embraced most of the core policies of George Bush, and in fact, even gone beyond. On the Wall Street bailouts, Bush bailed out Wall Street to the tune of $700 billion, but for Obama, it's been four and a half trillion in money dispersed and another 16 trillion in basically zero interest loans to Wall Street. On the exporting of our jobs, we had the free trade agreements actually signed by Clinton, uh, enforced by Bush, and now you have Obama who's been expanding those so-called free trade agreements that continue to ship our jobs overseas, undermine our wages here at home. In fact, the president, you know, what is he pointing to? General Motors as the, um, you know, as the example of the American, quote, recovery. But what's going on in General Motors, you know, corporate profits are, are off the charts. CEO salaries are off the charts, but workers' wages have basically been cut almost in half. You know, this is not what a recovery looks like. Yet this is the economy now being promoted, uh, being hyped, actually, by the Democrats. They're asking for nothing more than basically poverty wages uh, for workers. To look at um, skyrocketing uh, student debt. You know, what's the difference between the Democrats and Republicans on the debt? They've both promised, they've promised to stay the course on student debt. They're not going to make it worse, they promise, but they're not going to make it better. <laughs> and that's not okay. The, the student debt crisis has basically turned a generation into indentured servants. So this is not something that uh, we can allow to stand. We need to be bailing out the students and the homeowners, in fact, and not bailing out the bankers. <laughs> On the war effort, you know, this was going to be the peace president, the Nobel Prize winner. <laughs> <laughs> you know? But just to clarify the record, for any of your, you know, your peace friends who are going to be voting for Obama, it's really important to point out, number one, <coughs> fool me once, shame on you. <laughs> fool me 400 times, shame on me. You know, there's just no question here. The president, day three, intensified the bombing in Pakistan. What was the Republican pressure to do that at the time? You know, he just walked into office with an incredible mandate to do the right thing. And the right thing was to intensify the bombing in Pakistan, and by the way, invite Larry Summers and Tim Geithner, who had basically overseen the Wall Street crash, to come and run the White House. Exactly. So a lot of reasons here to stand up, but especially on the peace front, because this president who uh, talked the talk has walked the walk in the opposite direction, has actually expanded the wars, the drone wars into Somalia and into Yemen, surged the troops into Afghanistan, and in fact withdrew from Iraq only because it was George Bush's negotiated date of withdrawal, and the President, Obama, was unable to postpone that withdrawal date, which he tried his darndest to do, but al-Maliki, the president, would not allow him to do that because they had gotten wind mm -hmm. through WikiLeaks uh, of what was actually going on in the war effort. So they refused to allow American troops to stay longer. And how did we withdraw? In the dead of night, on a secret, undisclosed date so that we would not be ambushed in the process. This is how much good that war for oil that has cost us trillions and countless thousands of American lives and hundreds of thousands of civilian lives. That's what you get, you know, but with a foreign policy based on brute force. We need to bring those troops home, all of them, from Afghanistan and from Iraq, retire the drones, 
and bring our troops back from the military bases in over a thousand uh, over a thousand bases in over 140 countries around. actually need to vote with our votes, not just vote with our feet. We have so many, you know, collaborators out there in the movement for peace and justice and sustainability and in the climate movement who are all ready and pumped to go out and vote with our feet, to get arrested if we need to, to put our bodies on the line, but who are afraid to vote with their votes. Yes. One quick thing about that, you know, if you fail to vote with your vote, all the work you do outside of the voting booth will actually be crushed by the repression emanating from the voting booth. Yes. Yeah. white flag of surrender over the voting booth by voting for a corporate sponsored candidate because to vote for either of them gives a mandate for four more years of corporate rule. Right. right. You may think, not us in this room, but your friends may think, well, I'm just doing this this is a reluctant vote. You know, this is a lesser evilism vote. You may think that, but that's not how they're going to use it. They're going to use it as a mandate for four more years of war, empire, and the slippery slope, which is getting very slippery, into the police state. Exactly. We have right. to stand yeah. up and lead the way forward, not with the politics of fear, but with the politics of courage. Woo